Can you explain the depression contention to me, please? Sure, I'd be glad to. Worry. That, that's a lot to unpack. Let's kind of take Sorry. those uh, modules. That's okay. It's a good. It's a good question. Um, first of all, I said something very similar to that in my first book, Currency Wars, in two thousand. Came out in two thousand eleven. I wrote most of it in two thousand ten. My newest book, which just came out earlier this year, is called The New Great Depression. So I am comfortable describing where we're heading, what we're heading into right now as, as a new depression. But I said the same thing in 2010, and I can take that entire thread from 2010 to 2021 and beyond and call it a depression. I'll explain why. In the, uh, at least in the United States, the way economists have viewed it, we had something called the long depression. It lasted from roughly 1870 to 1898 in the United States. Now, it doesn't mean that every single year output went down and they didn't even keep the records we keep today. And there are a lot of things that are um, that are different, but it's known as the long depression. So depressions are not something that are necessarily neat and tidy, number one. Um, number two, uh, just to ex- be a little bit technical for a second, a recession is conventionally defined as two or more consecutive quarters of declining GDP. There's a little more to it than that, but if you get two quarters of decline of GDP, you know, consecutive, that's a recession. And then we have a formal body here in the United States, the National Bureau of Economic Research. They date them. I think other countries have the same thing. I think Australia has set a record for developed economies for the longest time without a recession, you know, using that definition, I think 26, 27 years, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so recessions come and go. And, uh, we had one, in, at least in the United States, but really globally, in 2020. The funny thing is, it was the shortest recession ever start to finish. Now, it was kind of March and April of 2020. They said it was over by the end of April, and the economy started to bounce back. And for that matter, January and even February were okay. Uh, but because March and April are in two different quarters, and because it was so severe, that both quarters had a drop in GDP. First quarter down around 5%, second quarter down around 31% on an annualized basis. The question comes from the fact that you have depressed growth. In other words, the growth that you have is below trend or it's below potential. So say here's, here's your trend line or your potential line. Here's your actual growth. That gap is depressed growth. You're not, you, you could be growing, but you're not growing as, as strongly as you, as you might or as you had in the past. Um, and by the way, the, 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 one of the longest recoveries, I think it was the longest recovery in U.S. history, fit that definition from 2009 to the end of 2019, maybe even throwing January 2020 for good measure. So that's, uh, um, a, a 10, over a 10 year period, close to an 11 year period. Uh, we had an expansion the whole time. Uh, but the, uh, the annualized growth rate was about 2.2%. Now, the average recovery since 1980 uh, was 3.2% uh, annualized growth. The average recovery since the end of World War II was over 4%, closer to 4.5% annualized growth. So the 2.2% pump growth relative to a recent trend of 3.2 and a long-term trend of 4.5 and potentially even higher, because when you come out of a recession, you got to be able to grow faster than that, that's depressed growth. So I would say we were in a depression from 2009 to 2019, not because we weren't growing, but because we were growing way below trend and way more slowly than the increase in the national debt. We're getting back to that right now. So we had, so um, again, just use the the Great Depression uh, as as an example, 1929 to 1940, that's the conventional dating for the Great Depression. But there were two technical recessions inside. One was 1929 to 1933, the other one was 1937 and 1938 because the Fed managed to screw things up twice, you know, in the course of one depression. Now we had very good growth from 1933 to 1937. The problem was when unemployment is 24% and you get it down to 14%, well, that's a big improvement. You're creating a lot of jobs, but it's still 14%. And when you ask people, when you put the questions differently, you say, well, okay, the stock market hit a certain level in 1929. It then crashed. Okay. It went down over almost 90% to hit bottom in June 1932. When did it get back to the 1929 high? The answer is 1954. It took 25 years to dig itself out of that hole. By the way, the same is true for commercial real estate. It did. Now, again, it doesn't mean you couldn't make money. It doesn't mean it didn't go up because from the bottom in June 1932, 
it did go up and you could have made money in stocks in 33 and 34, but it took until 1954 to get back to the 1929 level. So that's what I mean by depression. It's not that there can't be growth. It's not that stock markets can go up. Both of